The European Civilizing Mission During the height of new imperialism, some of those who advocated for continued colonization justified their takeover by calling it a civilizing mission. This French term describes the duty of Europe to bring their higher culture to the supposedly lower countries that they colonized. This was done in a variety of ways, such as missionary trips to convert the natives to Christianity. However, this concept formed far before it was actually termed and popularized as the civilizing mission in the 19th century. Where did it all start? Well, European countries had been colonizing centuries before new imperialism. Not until the late 17th century, though, did the idea of promoting a better way of life through colonization come about. Before the Enlightenment took place, people were more divided by religion than race, location, or culture. However, the idea of scientific racism was born in this age of rationality and proven thought. Starting in the late 1600s, the Royal Society published papers referring to anyone below a Caucasian man or woman as a savage. Thinkers of the Enlightenment established a hierarchy that put European males such as themselves at the top and anyone else at the bottom. These thoughts are backed up by evidence of differences between Homo sapiens in different areas of the world as more discoveries are made. Since mainly Western Europeans are the ones in charge of this, their characteristics became superior to those of their enemies or simply anyone else. After the publication of Darwin's Origin of Species and Evolutionary Theories, Europeans named themselves the superior race as they were the most advanced. With the rise of other ideologies based on science, like minority in the late 19th century, Race became a dominant idea that classified the world's people in a certain structure. Still, racism wasn't enough to come up with the civilizing mission. It didn't come about until countries needed a way to justify their colonies. Imperialism became bigger with the idea of mercantilism. This system said that nations had to have a certain amount of gold or silver bullion and a world of limited economies. Trading with competitors would not be advantageous because their opponent would also gain in a world of limited wealth. So, countries established colonies that they could trade with but still keep all the bullion within their own system. Also, colonies were a great resource for these precious metals. This concept and the general advantages that came with expansion inspired countries to build up their empires, even as mercantilism became obsolete. By the 19th and 20th centuries, imperialism and the size of a nation's empire reflected their strength and influence with some of their own personal goals mixed in. After Germany's unification and the spread of ideologies such as communism in Russia and Eastern Europe and other concerning events that interrupted the balance of power, countries felt the need to reassert their authority by going outside of Europe and building up their empire. The civilizing mission became a great excuse for this game of power between European nations. Unstable European countries could not claim to protect their own people's freedom and rights at home while they violated those of others on a different continent. The civilizing mission became a simple explanation for countries trying to benefit themselves through colonies, given on the basis of new discoveries popular amongst the citizens. After both world wars, this mission began to fall apart and decolonization rapidly spread. Many natives saw an opportunity to take advantage of their weak home countries and gain freedom. Also, many European nations realized that it wasn't worth it to keep these colonies anymore. Or perhaps, after witnessing so much violence and instability at home, not only were the natives inspired to get the freedom they deserved, but some European nations realized their control and influence could no longer be justified by experiencing what they had done to others.